My name is Amy Richard, and I am a graduating MFA from the University of Iowa Center for the Book, and this uh, exhibition here is part of my uh, thesis work. Before I came to Iowa, I was uh, a, an educational outreach coordinator for a program about invasive plants at the University of Florida and I'd been involved in science related outreach for about almost 20 years and uh, after raising our two sons and uh, doing so many other things for so many years I decided that I really needed to get back to my artwork in a big way and so I came to the University of Iowa to basically recalibrate and get myself back on the path where I would be uh, working and focusing on my artwork full time. The name of my thesis project was Drawing from the Book of Nature, and it is about the idea that nature has its own story to tell and that it has its own vocabulary that it uses to communicate with us. And I'm really fascinated by that idea. Um, Everywhere I look, I see common patterns, even from the ocean where I grew up and where I live most of the time when I'm not in Iowa, um, and upland environments. Um, and so I've just been really compelled to, to bring that into my work. While working on my thesis and studying here, uh, I became aware of um, some ideas that philosophers that go back as far as Aristotle and who knows maybe before um, and those ideas are based on the perception that different natural philosophers had over the centuries when they were looking at studying nature even when um, even when something was no longer alive there seemed to be an energy or something that they couldn't describe um, that they observed in nature and I think we're still at that point where we can't really figure out that what that presence is um, some people call it God some people refer to it as as energy um, anyhow I was really interested to learn of this continuity through through the centuries and um, continuity of this idea and so because I myself have have thought that there's still something there and um, some of the objects found in nature that are left behind, the detritus, the, the oyster shells on the shore, the empty egg casings on the beach, the maple seeds that are on the ground, even though that's kind of the leftovers of nature, of the processes of regeneration, there still seems to be something there. And so my work uh, explores that idea as well. One of the reasons I came to the University of Iowa was, was to study at the Center for the Book because they are world renowned for their um, teaching about paper, handmade paper and book arts. Um, my main focus in coming here was handmade paper and so my thesis project is virtually all about handmade paper. Every piece that I did was made um, by hand. Um, most of the work was, was um, made out of um, Kozo, which is a paper mulberry uh, cellulose fiber um, that's been traditionally used in Japanese paper making. Um, and kind of going back to the earlier idea that I talked about, this energy in nature <clears throat> um, is the reason why I chose to work in this medium because I feel like there's still some of that energy in these fibers that I've used to make my sculptures, the sea urchin pieces, uh, the egg casing. Um, was done actually with abaca fibers. Um, but these natural fibers still seem to retain something that I can't describe, but that I really respond to and I love working with. And so uh, I decided to, to use that to, to make the work that, you'll, that you see here. Um, the pulp prints um, are on Japanese Asian style paper made with the kozo fibers that I spoke of. Um, and those are, some of them are silk screen prints and some of them are nature prints where I've actually used this, sprayed this highly beaten cotton pulp uh, through Kozo bark to create imagery. Um, uh, the Japanese paper making method involves, is, is pretty labor intensive. It involves first uh, harvesting the plant, which is these long stalks from the paper mulberry tree, and they're about an inch in diameter. 
and then steaming the bark off of the branch and then scraping the outer green and black bark off, off of the inner, what they call the inner bast fiber, and that's like a creamy, uh, pale yellow uh, color. So that inner bast fiber is what's, what's cooked in an alkali, in a mild alkali solution, and then I hand beat it with a wooden mallet and, and tease those fibers apart, and then that, those fibers are suspended in water, and that's what's used to make the paper, where you dip a, a sieve, basically a flat screen called a sugetta, uh, through, through the fiber that's suspended in water to get the paper. And this is, paper's been made that way for about 1,500 years um, or longer. Uh, the pulp printing technique uh, is something that was developed by um, paper artist <coughs> Drew Matat out of Chicago. Um, and he was inspired by another artist that he saw using this technique where they were spraying highly beaten pulp through silkscreen. And that's, to my knowledge, a pretty innovative technique that um, has just been used in the last 10, 10 or so years.